Here is another roof design for our 625 square foot house. We have a 12 and 12 roof pitch or a roof that is going to have a 45 degree angle. And we're going to have plenty of attic space along with a drop down attic ladder. And instead of using a small piece of ceiling backing here, you can always use a full height joist to install floor sheathing in your attic. And we are using two by 10 floor joists in this example. Yours might need to be larger. And if you're not going to use your attic for storage, then they could even be smaller. We're going to break the joists on the center of the wall here. The wall is going to run all the way through to the other end. And we're going to have straps located every four feet to create some type of a rafter tie. You can always put these straps on the sides and put them every 16 inches or 32 inches on center if needed. And you can see here where we are running these joists through a little bit. And I ran this board here through a little bit so that I could nail this joist here into this one here and get a nice lap tie to create a nice connection here. And then we're going to use some double hangers and a single hanger over here. And I made this a half inch larger than it needed to be. But that's this design here. This does not mean that that's going to work for you. Make sure that you read and follow the installation instructions for your pull down stairway. And this pull down stairway is located in between the living room and the kitchen, maybe even the kitchen with a dining area. You can always relocate it if it's going to work better for you in another part of the home. Next up, let's go ahead and install our roof rafters. Our roof rafters are going to be 2 by 10 and spaced 16 inches on center. And in case I didn't mention it, our ceiling joist will also be spaced 16 inches on center. Next up, let's add our blocks. We are going to be shaping the top of the blocks so that we can nail the roof sheathing to them. And I'm spacing this out an inch and a half away from the face of the wall framing studs or the face of the blocks here so that we can put our siding or stucco underneath the fascia board. And I'm leaving about an inch and a half distance from the bottom of the fascia board to the lower part of the roof rafter here. We want to be able to slide some of our water resistant materials or waterproofing materials underneath the fascia board. And this home might require some type of roof ridge bracing. And these braces are going to be two by six and they are about at a 45 degree angle. And we're going to nail it onto the side of the ridge and onto the side of the ceiling joist blocks and also into the top plate wall framing if we can. And I made these two by six because they were going to be a little longer than normal. Next up, let's take a look at our collar ties. And we're going to be using two by four here. And these can be nailed to the roof rafters, I'm guessing, with at least four 16D nails. Four on this side, four on this side. And again, these are collar ties, not rafter ties. Our ceiling joists that are spaced four foot on center will be our rafter ties. And I went ahead and installed some floor sheathing. And it will be up to you and your local building department or building codes, structural engineers, to figure out if you're going to be able to sheet most of the floor or all of the floor and quite possibly create some additional living space up there. And if you do create living space up here, you're probably going to need a regular stairway and not a pull down stairway. Next up, let's go ahead and install our gable studs. And I went ahead and used 2x4. If you watched a couple of these other videos, I went ahead and made these 2x6 because most of the time 10 foot is the maximum length for a 2x4 in wall framing. But I went ahead and installed a wall stiffening brace here. And even though this one is installed in the middle, you could always install one at the one third level and two third level or install even more of them depending upon your project and the length of the wall framing studs and whether or not your structural engineer is going to approve it. Next up, let's go ahead and add our fascia board fill. And that's going to be an inch and a half spacer between the face of the wall framing, face of the rafter, and the back of the fascia board. And I'm also going to add some backing to the bottom of the roof rafter here so that I can get some better nailing. I can use at least two or even three nails to connect the top of the gable stud to the roof rafter and the backing. And the roof brace will attach to the ridge. You can always move this back a little further, but I moved it as far as I could this way because of the attic access opening. 
I didn't want to have it in the way of the opening. Next up, let's take a look at the gable stud top of it, how it's going to be connecting to the rafter. So I can put one nail into the rafter, one nail into the backing, and then of course connect the backing to the roof rafter. Next up, let's go ahead and pan out here to take a look at our fascia board spacing boards. And again, those are two by fours. You can always make them a little bigger. And if you want to, instead of using a two by four, you can always use larger lumber for the gable stud wall stiffener, like a two by six or a four by four. And I'm going to be using the framing hardware here. These are often referred to as hurricane ties to create a nice connection here. Go ahead and pan out. Like I said, you can have one in the middle or you can have one a little bit lower and one a little higher or use two by six for any gable studs that are going to be longer than 10 feet. And next up, let's take a look at the ceiling backing. This is a two by four. We can nail the two by four into the gable studs. And since we're looking at the bottom of the ceiling joist, let's go ahead and head over to the drop down stairway framed opening, double hanger, single hanger, double hanger, double hanger, double hanger, and then double joist, one on each side. And even though I have the double joist in my example, you would need to check with your engineer to see if it would be required in your area. Next up, let's go ahead and pan out so that we can install the roof rafters. And there they are installed, 16 inches on center. And if you're looking for more information about roof rafter installation or laying them out so that they can be cut perfectly, make sure that you visit our website and check out more of our roof framing videos. Next up, let's go ahead and install the fascia board along with a rip strip. This is going to be an angled strip. Remember, our roof is at a 45 degree angle. And if our fascia board is plumb, then we're just simply going to grab a two by four, measure up an inch and a half and cut a 45 degree angle and then attach this to the top of the fascia board. You can go ahead and shape the top of the fascia board if needed, but I needed a little more room. I needed to lower this a little bit further to allow for a gap and provide me with a little bit of distance in between the bottom of the fascia board and the bottom of the roof rafter. Another view of it here are shaped blocks and what it would look like without the rip strip. Let's go ahead and put our rip strip back in. Head over to the bottom here. You can see the gap I'm talking about inch and a half away from the wall framing and about an inch and a half from the bottom of the fascia board to the bottom of the roof rafter. So for something like this, I could go ahead and install some flashing paper here, maybe something that's about 12 inches wide. And then after I've installed that, I could rip a one by down to where I have an inch and a half wide piece and then attach that to the bottom of the roof rafters. And obviously with something like this, we're not going to have any ventilation blocks at the bottom unless we drill some holes through the fascia board. So we're probably going to end up using some roof dormer vents to ventilate the attic if needed. Let's go ahead and head over to the other side here, give you another view of it. And even though I didn't run the fascia board spacer backing all the way down, you could do that if needed. And it might be better to do that if you're going to be attaching some type of a finished material in this area. And who knows, maybe you could always use this as the finished material and then just simply paint it. Go ahead and head up a little higher to provide you with another view of the gap here. And then up to the top. And then let's go ahead and remove the fascia boards so you can get an idea of how we're using the spacer boards here. Go ahead and put the fascia board back on. And then go ahead and pan out here a little bit so that we can go ahead and install our roof sheathing. And I went ahead and started with a roof sheathing at the top and worked my way down. Sometimes on steeper pitches, it's going to be easier to start at the top than it will be at the bottom, if that will work better for you. If you want more information on that, let me know in the comment area and I'll be glad to make another video on that. So let's go ahead and wrap the video up here with my last suggestion, and that would be to watch the rest of the videos in this series. If you're planning on building a small house and don't really have your mind made up as to what type of roof you're going to install on it. And thanks for watching. To learn more about home building and repairs, visit us at our website. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. See you next time.